holy dooly, eh? Here we go for another year. Oh, the jolly almond trees are starting to flower. And this is something that normally happens in the dark. You know, the almond grower goes to bed and he gets up in the morning and there's bee boxes in his paddock. But being that I actually live on this paddock, I figured I could go to bed and do it this morning because it's plenty cold, the bells and bees are still in bed. And what's more, you might even get to be able to see the crane work in the daylight rather than in the middle of the darkness. So as the sun cracks over the trees and I try to be enthusiastic and get my bees off my truck, here we go. Well, I got organized and I bought some boots. They're not, they're actually like horse riding boots because I got sick of the bees running up my legs and stinging my ankles. So I thought, right, I'll get something organized. And if you want something done, you ask my wife because she's a good one at online shopping. She found these at the jolly horse riding shop. They got sort of like, I don't know, crazy, whatever that's called. What's that called? Wetsuit gear at the top. So they're nice and comfortable and they don't get, you don't get any bee stings on your ankle. So I reckon it's a win-win all round. And what's more that waterproof if you're in the mud. <laughs> like last night we were picking up these girls, it was been pissing down rain. It was awful muddy where we were and I didn't even get wet boots, so that was kind of cool. So not only did I have no stings on my ankles, I didn't even have wet socks, so I tell you what, it's a good life. I better not lose mother's scissors or I'll be in trouble. Mind you, she probably doesn't know her scissors are in there. Shh, don't tell her. Oh, Goodness me, ladies. All over the place you are. So there's a little bit of excitement in the almond industry as to where you should put your bees. And I don't know, unless you've got of course the problem becomes, if you get talking to the, some of the big corporate boys, they've got like, I don't know, hell, what have they got? 10,000 acres? Maybe not that much, maybe three or 4,000 acres. I don't know what that is in hectares, but say about two or, oh no, what is that? 1,000 hectares, say. And then you need to spread the bees all around the place because obviously the bees can't fly more than five k's. My little block's only 50 acres and the bees have got wings, so I figured they can fly where they like to go. So I like to put them where it's warm, they get more sunlight, and then they fly more, I figure. You put them out under the shade of the trees and they don't fly anyway. That's yeah. my theory, so here we are. And it's easier too, because you got them all into one spot. I don't think the real powerful people in the almond industry are gonna believe me. But the cool thing is, this is my block and I can do whatever the hell I like. Now, why doesn't that wanna be in it? Come on, turn you stupid thing. Nothing like fabulous equipment, is there? <laughs> So this is the moment when you should repair your son's bee suit because he's just got it out of the ute and found out he's got a big bit missing out of his ass. So he said, no, nope, you're on your own, you bloody non-sewing beekeeper. If you happen to have a helper, just make sure their bee suit hasn't got a hole in it. Apparently he's not being a slack prick, he's just too weak to get stung on the butthole. The thing about moving bees in the dark is that they're normally running instead of flying. And when you're working your bees in your apiary, of course, you're not going to have this situation. But when you're moving them like this, they all end up running up your ankle, you see? So they run up your leg and they get stuck on your ankles and they want to get you and say, right, you rotten human, what are you doing out here moving us around? They don't realise that you're actually looking after them. They're just defending their home. But anyway, it saves going home with swollen ankles. Or at least bloody sore ankles. <laughs> Well, we had to wait to film in the end because it started pouring with rain as we were loading the last few hives off. So we thought we'd come back and give you the layout. Obviously, I am not the most straightest bee liner upper you've ever met, but still, they're off the truck. They're safe and sound. The flowers are flowering. The bees are flying, sort of, and it's bloody freezing cold here today. So I don't think the 
I'm surprised they're flying at all, but they're really just trying to orientate at the moment. They're probably thinking, what the hell happened? Where are we now? But, and one other thing to remember when you are laying your beehives down, try to actually get on the slope of the land. And that's why my rows are not perfectly straight as such. They're actually going with the orientation of the land falling down because you want your hive leaning forward. So when it rains, the jolly water will run out the front. Unless, of course, you've got slap bottom hives and then it doesn't matter a stuff what you do, but still. My poor old hives have still got wooden bases for the most part, except for the cool new plus hives. They've got little slits in the plastic bit. So I try to lean them forward so when it rains, the rain doesn't run to the back of the hive and make a hell of a mess. So this excitement happens roughly for about six weeks or so, because I've got some really early trees that come in and some later ones that flower, so we're a bit longer period than normal. Some of the modern orchards, the, the 90 percent, well probably the 99 percent of almond trees that are still left growing, they're still about two weeks away before they'll flower and they'll flower for about a month. And then off we go to the next thing. Have a listen to the buzz. Golly gosh, I guess that's what it sounds like when there's 60 million workers out trying to pollinate the flowers. Huh, there's what the exercise is all about. Of course, everybody realises that we need bees to pollinate our almond trees because the pollen can't do its own thing. Mother Nature's decided that this is the best option. We've got some flowers with some pollen and some ladies that want to move the pollen around. And so you can get some nuts on your plate. I never dreamed I'd have 60 million workers for me. Isn't Mother Nature fascinating? I tell you what, I get fascinated when I look in a bee box, then I get fascinated when I'm standing here watching the, all the workforce figure out how to get the pollen out to flower. I mean, Mother Nature's decided that the girls want to actually get this pollen off of this flower here, and she puts a little bit of nectar down the bottom of the flower as well, and what's more, also decided to make the bees all covered in hair. And just as a kicker, they got the bees organised to eat the pollen. I mean, my goodness me, I don't know. It's pretty random, isn't it? Poof, tell you what, if you get your head around how complicated Mother Nature is, you're doing better than me. I spent a lot of years as an almond grower trying to tell my beekeeper where to put his bees and spread them around my paddock so I'd get the best out of them. Now that I'm a beekeeper myself and I realise bees actually have wings and they like to fly, so they actually enjoy a bit of a fly around. Man, these girls are, I don't know, they're at least 500 metres away or more. And look at them, they're into it like crazy. So, oh, just calm down, I think, almond people. I mean, I know when you've got a thousand acres, you can't have them all in one spot because that's ridiculous. But perhaps you don't need to have them 10 boxes here and two boxes there. I'm fairly confident, though, my little lone voice in the world is not going to make a difference. But there you go. I reckon they got wings. They like to fly. The trees can't move, for goodness sakes, can they? So the bees have got to come to them. Wouldn't that be weird if it was the other way around and the fly owls had to make it to the beehive? That'd be something different. Well, I guess the fun begins, because now we've got to get organised and make sure we keep the weeds under control. Make sure we keep the fungus off the trees. Make sure they get some water. Godly gosh, that's a fun job. That's what these black hoses are for. We got the drippers going. Well, not today, but that's when it will be. And if we give them a bit of fertiliser, get them organised to get to the Almond Co. eventually at the end of all the excitement. And then pray that someone will give me some money. So that's kind of crazy. I mean, agriculture is a weird way to make a living, honestly. You generate a product and then hope somebody wants to eat it.
I am pretty pleased with that effort. Considering how cold it is today, they're really working hard. If you'd like to get your hands on something special too, by the way, we've come up with this idea. We're gonna actually do a one-off run of a t-shirt, which is a caricature drawing of myself. What we're gonna do is a batch run, and if you go over to the website, put your order in, and then in a couple of weeks' time, we'll put our order in to the people that make the t-shirts, and it'll pop up in your shop, and you'll be able to go, check this shit out, I'm a fan of the Bush Bee Man. So we've co-opted our mate Tim, who's the artist on our rhyme show, to get involved with making this t-shirt. And it's pretty incredible. I mean, I can't draw a blooming half reasonable stick man, but this dude's incredible. So I think it looks great. So head over to the website, give it a click, get your hands on a rare t-shirt, support the show. You know what? But if you don't want a t-shirt, don't be ashamed. We don't mind if you get become a Patreon supporter or whatever else goes on out there in the world to help the show kick along. And what's that boring bit at the end of every YouTube thing? Don't forget, click like, subscribe, send me a, I don't know, send me to your auntie Phil, because she's gonna freak out and go, what's that bloody mad beekeeper doing down there in Australia?